Hello everyone and welcome to the What is Beauty Campaign's 2014 Google Plus Hangout Series. I'm your host, Lauren Alicia of GYC Girl You Crazy and the campaign is brought to you by Endless Dreams Foundation, GYC Girl You Crazy, and Amina Lene. Tonight we have with us the awesome, inspirational, motivational Chelsea Kastner of Just Ask Why. She's a life facilitator, millennial expert that talks about career, budgeting, life, you name it. But tonight we have her talking about how to outthink your mental bully. How does that sound? Well, I hope it sounds awesome because I'm excited. So without further ado, Chelsea, take it away. Hi, thank you, Lauren, for such an amazing introduction. And hello, everyone. I am so excited to be here. When Lauren called me and told me about the What is Beauty campaign, I was like, yes, we need to be talking about this. These types of conversations need to be happening all the time. The thing is, when we stop talking about what we think is beautiful, um, you know, I think talking to strangers is beautiful and people who smile all the time when they talk is beautiful and going to a yoga class is beautiful. Because I talk about those things, I live into them and I am living what I consider my life to be beautiful is. But when we stop talking about what we think is beautiful, we leave holes within ourselves that people can start dumping their crap in us and telling us what they think is beautiful. So the more conversations like with these we have, the better, the more authentic and beautiful life we can live because beauty is in the eye of the beholder, as they say, and it's so true because what others see as beautiful is not necessarily what is beautiful for you. So let's keep having these conversations. So that's kind of why I created my company, Just Ask Why, which I am the founder of. Um, it is a content source, source place that um, young millennial women transitioning to adulthood can come to to find resources and tips and tools of how to navigate life. This is a really tough time. And when I first moved to New York City, I think it's four or five years ago now, that's all I heard from my people. And I still hear it from my peers that this is really tough, that dating is tough, that relationships are getting harder, um, you know, it's a new dynamic now that we're in the working world rather than college, um, balancing life and career, figuring out career-wise what you want to do, how to maintain health while you're working crazy hours. So it's a really, really hard time. So that's why I created Just Ask Why, because I want to have a place where women can start to figure out and use tools that can get them aligned or on the path to living that happier, more beautiful life. So today my topic is how to outthink your mental bully. So what is your mental bully? And that is that voice inside of your head that we all have, because we're all human. So we hear this voice inside of our head all the time saying, we're not good enough, we're not worthy, somebody can do it better, we don't look good enough, whatever it may be. And I have some bad news for you guys. Your mental bully is never going away. It's just how we are as humans. We all have mental chatter and things that do not, and voices in ourselves that do not align with who we really are. So that's bad news. You can't outrun your mental bully. It's impossible. You're not fast enough. They will catch you. But, and it's a big but, you can outthink your mental bully. And outthinking your mental bully actually shifts something within you where your mental bully becomes your guiding star of how you can have a happier life, how you can have a more fulfilled life. It's a tricky concept of how can this voice that tells me I'm not good, up, good enough actually be my guiding star to more happiness? Well, here's the key. When you are happy, Think of a time you're with your friends, you went out to dinner, maybe you're in a bubble bath, you're just happy, right? You don't think to yourself, hmm, how could I make myself happier right now? It just You're just living in the present. So, but when you have these mentally thoughts that are, you're not good enough, that's actually showing you in your life where you can be better, where you can show up better, where you can transform your life to have more happiness. So... It's a little tricky to get there. I'm not going to say that using these tools that I'm going to get you will get you there ASAP, but we're going to work on it. And, you know, one thing that one of my teachers has shared to me is that upset is access. When you are upset, that is your access point to more happiness in your life, right? 
So instead of being mad at our bully, let's kind of embrace it and say, listen, we're going to learn how to work with you here. We're going to be a team on this. You're showing me things for a reason. So I'm going to listen, but I'm going to, I'm going to handle it my way, not your way. So that's what I'm here to do. I have some um, four exercises, tools, tips that um, I think are really great to help you outthink your mo mental bully. So grab some paper and pen or pull up a, a Word document on your computer and jot these down. These can be like tools that you keep in your backpack so you can pull them out whenever you need them. So my first tip is, or tool or exercise if you want to call it that, is point your finger at the bully. What do I mean by that? So a lot of times um, you'll start doing things that you're not so happy about in your life. Maybe you're overeating. Maybe you are ignoring people that you love. Maybe you're snippy at people that you love. Um, maybe you're going out drinking too much at the bars than you want. So when I say point the finger, start noticing everywhere where you're not living authentically the way you want to live. Where are you not living into what you consider beautiful, right? Snipping at your friends is not beautiful. None of us want to do that. So by pointing those fingers at, if pointing your finger at each of those things, you're able to recognize where it is that you're not being yourself, right? Those people, those actions are really not you. So once you jot a few things down, I want you to take a deep breath. And just ask yourself, where is this coming from, right? In a very loving way, where are these actions coming from? And don't expect a light bulb to pop on top of your head and say, ding, 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 this is where it's coming from. Because it probably won't. It may. Some of you may have an experience where you're like, oh, it's coming from this. But it, it may show up later or it may never show up. But the point is, is that you're, you're, you're outing it. You're, you're recognizing where this mental bully is showing up in your life. And recognition is your access to change anything in life, right? When you recognize something, you are then able to transform it. So a quick example in my life. When I moved to New York City, I was not being myself. I was overeating. I was not really showing up the most creatively that I could at work. I was, you know snipping at friends, maybe snipping at my mom a little bit, doing things that were just not in alignment with who I was. Well, I did some work of trying to figure out why I was doing these things and not really living the way I wanted to live. And I came to realize that the, the bullying thought that had pushed me to doing all those things is that I kept telling myself I was not I was not able to live in New York City. I couldn't handle it, right? So I actually created... Um, situation for myself where I couldn't handle it. I, you know, I was beating myself up. I was letting the thought take over and I was creating a life that I couldn't handle. But once I recognized that, I was able to transform it. So that's the first step is really just outing it, pointing your finger at it, show yourself, your body, your mind, where it's showing up. And once you do that, you can move on to the next exercises and you can really transform this for yourself. So the next thing is change the game to freeze tag. What I mean by that is when your mind starts taking off, it's like the momentum starts building. So I like this example. Say you're getting ready for a date and, you know, all of a sudden you're noticing that pimple that just appeared on your face and you're trying to cover it up. You're trying on like 20 different outfits. Your like favorite go-to outfit is like not looking great anymore. You are nervous you're going to over talk. You're nervous you're going to like eat too much. You're nervous that you're going to eat too fast. You're nervous that you're going to say something stupid. You know, your mind just keeps going. So when you find yourself in, you know, a nervous state, an anxious state, even a sad state, you got to say, freeze, stop. We're changing the game. I hear you. I know what you're saying, but I'm going to put you over there for now and I'm going to do something else. And that's what you do. Maybe you want to do like a quick yoga flow. Maybe, you know, get some downward dogs in there. Or maybe you pick up that phone and you call your mom and you talk about something unrelated to what was going in your head. You know, you don't want to add to the momentum. So call your mom and talk about something else. Or 
YouTube a really funny skit of your favorite comedian or listen to like a really awesome song and dance your ass off. The whole point is to switch from the gear of what you were in, of that mental chatter, that that motivation that was, I mean, not the motivation, the momentum that was that was building in your mind to stop it, at least pause it or slow it down and turn your attention towards something else to give yourself a break so you don't really overwhelm yourself that you like freeze so much that you can't even walk out the door. So now there's one caveat to this, anger. It's so, so hard to freeze anger. Let me tell you, when you start feeling angry, I am sure you have all experienced this. It just comes up in you. It just like hits you like a train and you just want to react. So it's really hard to divert yourself and say, oh, I'm angry. I'm going to do a few downward dogs. I mean, maybe eventually you'll get there, but that's pretty, pretty hard to do when you're feeling really pissed off. So I love this analogy that somebody told me, and I think it works great for when you're feeling angry. Okay, so think of anger as a subway train, right? You've been waiting in the subway station for a really long time, and the anger subway comes rushing in, and it's going fast. And the doors open, and you're like, you want to get on, you want to get on. You've been like waiting for this. You're just ready to take off. But you just take a deep breath. You let the doors close and you let the train pass. And maybe the next train that comes for you is like pissed off or annoyed or um, sad, whatever it is. It may not be happiness that comes down the track, but it's going to be something other than anger. And the point is not to stifle anger because anger has a purpose and you're allowed to be angry. But what we want to prevent ourselves from doing is acting on that anger. Because when we act on anger, we do things that are totally not who we are. We say things that are hurtful that we later regret. We do things that are harmful to ourselves or other people that we 100% regret. So it's just, it's not pretty. We normally create more chaos when we act at, out of anger than we, than we actually solve the problem. So if you can just pause and have that visual of like the train doors closing and say, nope, I'm not going to get on the anger train, and you allow yourself to get on the annoyed train, you'll probably make a lot less damage to yourself. So try those two little tips and tools and see, see what works for you. Okay, my next is actually my favorite. It is um, the exercise or the tip that I use most often, and my good friends know this because they're the ones that I use it on, and it is reveal it to heal it. And what I mean by that is these emotions that we're feeling, right? These thoughts, these mental, like, you're not good enough. They just, they're like two-year-old kids. They just want attention. So let's give them what they want and shut them up. So reveal it to heal it is you do this in a safe environment. Please don't be going doing this, like, in the bar or at a date or at, you know, at work, you might not feel comfortable. You want to do it in a really safe environment with people you feel very safe around, you know, really close friends, close family members, people you can trust. And just let those emotions come up. Like, cry it out. Like, go at it. Because I believe that a person who cries is actually braver than the person that holds it in, right? That I think that's kind of cowardly just to say, I'm not going to deal with that emotion. I'm not going to deal with that emotion. And then you end up letting that emotion come out like sideways and it's really not that pretty. So if you just deal with the emotion the way it wants to come up and out of you, just cry it out. I did this when I first moved to New York City and I was stress eating and just really felt not good in my body. I sat my friend down on the couch and I just cried to her. I said, I don't know what's going on with me. I don't know how I got, you know, to this point. These behaviors are not what I'm used to. I don't know how to handle it. And I just cried. I just cried and cried and cried and cried. And as soon as I stopped crying, I felt tremendous relief. And I felt, oh my God, thank God I no longer have to beat this drum of I'm a stress eater. I'm a stress eater. Oh my God, I'm a stress eater. I just felt like I outed it. Okay, it's out. Oh my God, this is something I've been doing and I want to change it. And as soon as you reveal it, you really, really can heal it. So give your emotions attention. They just want to be heard and let them be heard, but don't let them take over your life. So reveal it to heal it. 
Now, my last one is self-soothe with self-love. Now, what's great about self-love is I think it can transform anything in your life. Loving, showing loving and kindness to yourself, others, even your food, showing kindness to your food and taking time to eat it and, and admiring the food and smelling it, it actually transforms the way you eat. So self-love, love in general, can change anything. So when you're in one of these states where you're like beating yourself up and you're angry that you've been doing X, Y, Z, you know, you're, you feel bad that you snapped at a friend or whatever it may be, do not punish yourself further, right? It's just, it's not going to help anything. For example, if you are in um, a meeting with your boss and he's mad at you because, or she's mad at you because you sent the wrong email or you sent something wrong, right? They're, you're pissed. You messed up. You go back to your desk and what are you going to do? Sit there and say like, oh my God, I'm going to get fired. I better just work here like 12 hour days, really show them that I'm going to like be better. No, it's really not going to help. And I'm sure your boss was over it in like a few hours, you know, on to the next thing. It's not going to help anyone if you punish yourself. What you should do is head back to your desk, grab your coat, go for a five minute walk, go to like the nail salon and get like a 10 minute chair massage and just say, you know what? Yes, I messed up. I'm not feeling myself. I, that was something I shouldn't have done, but I'm human and I'm learning and I, I'm going to treat myself with care and I'm going to get better because that's what we do. We learn, we grow, we get better. So some of my favorite things to do is take a shower, take a hot shower. Honestly, it can transform anything or a bath. Um, make yourself a nice healthy meal instead of grabbing something at the deli or whatever. Make yourself like a really nice meal. Um, relax. Don't watch TV. Read a really good book. Go to the massage parlor. Do something that just feels really, really nice and relaxing to you. And I promise you it will change your outlook. It changed, It always changes your outlook. Um, Self-love is really the best thing you can do for yourself and for the people around you. So that those are my four um, tips. So we'll recap. Point your finger at your bully. Where is it showing up in your life? Change the game to freeze tag slash imagine the emotions are like a subway train coming. You can let the door close without getting on the train. Reveal it to heal it in a safe environment. Let the emotions come up. Let that two-year-old's nagging mental bully be heard and then move on from it. And the last one, self-soothe self with self-love. So those are my four tips. I hope that you guys gained, you know, at least liked one or two of them that you think you can, you can use in your life. Keep them in your backpack, as I said. There are great tools and tips that you can pull out at any time when you're feeling overwhelmed or your, your mind's just going like crazy, gaining way too much momentum on a topic or a situation that you know is not serving you. So definitely whip these out whenever you want. They're, they're yours for you. They're there for you to use. And I have other great content and sources like this on my website. So please go to www.justaskwhy, the letter Y, dot com, and you can see all the things that I have on there for you guys to check out. And I have exciting news that my first Just Ask Why event is going to be January 14th um, at 7 p.m. in New York City. I've just locked down the location, so um, I will be sending news about that soon. So if you live in New York City or if you just want more great content from me, please sign up for my newsletter. I'm gonna be sending more information out. Um, but to give you guys a quick recap, one of my greatest teachers, I love her to death, her name is Laura Touch, so Google her, she's amazing. She's an energy healer, she's a physical therapist, uh, she does muscle testing, which is this really cool thing I can't even get into explaining. But what she's going to be coming and teaching us is how to use essential oils. And let me tell you, essential oils have been a game changer for me. Um, there is an oil little, literally to transform any emotion you're feeling. If you are feeling sluggish, there's an oil to change that. If you are feeling self-doubt, there is an oil to change that. Or if you are feeling jealous, there is an oil to change that. Literally, there are so many oils and there's a specific way that you, you use these oils that really just moves those feelings up and out of you um, almost instantaneously. 
my boyfriend is actually like over the moon about me finding these oils. He thinks it's the best thing. So he'll even say to me, Chelsea, use your oils, use your oils. I used it right before this to just kind of center me, bring me back, you know, to allow me to like give you guys the best content I can. So if you're around, please come. It is an event you are not going to want to miss. So sign up for my newsletter on my website. And um, yeah, I'll just be keep sending you guys some great stuff. And I would love to hear from you. What are topics that, you know, you feel strongly about? I talk a lot about career, you know, changing your, your relationship to money. Those are two big things I talk a lot about. But also just relationships in general. How do you, like, go out into the world and date in, like, a, a really – a way that doesn't seem depressing and annoying and like, oh, dating in this city sucks. How can you transform it? That's what I'm all about is like, don't change your life first by transforming your thoughts about it and, and your own actions and then the world around you will change. So come visit me. I would love to hear from you guys. And thank you so much, Lauren, for letting me be a part of this conversation. As I said in the beginning, let's never stop talking about what we believe beauty is. It is the only way we will live a beautiful life. All right. Thank you guys so much. And um, I look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye.